deep dives and in-depth swing reviews like this one don't come easy. There's a lot of work. There's a lot of practice that goes on behind the scenes off camera. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well as what I am practicing and what I'm working on out here. And I've got some upcoming videos that I think you'll be really interested in. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to help your game. This video is going to be all about practice. Now it's going to be practice through the lens of the Marcus Edblad Golf Swing Review. This is week number six. Time has absolutely flown by, but I want to show you a little bit about what all goes into a long-term deep swing review like I do on this channel and I've done several times in the past. I feel like there's a lot of things that you guys don't get to see and I want to try and shine a light on that out here today. On camera, you see me for about 10 minutes per video. This is video number six in this series. So after this video, you'll have seen me working on this for about an hour. What you don't see is me off camera. Now I have the simulator out here in the garage. It is absolutely a crucial tool for my busy life to be able to work on all of these swing changes that I'm trying to make. I probably come out here five to six days a week, anywhere from an hour and a half to three or four hours at a clip. I'm putting in a lot of effort and a lot of time. If I was only going out and hitting, let's say one or two buckets of balls a week to work on this, you wouldn't see anywhere near the level of results that you see in my videos. But if you don't put in the time to develop it and you don't have the patience and the work ethic and the dedication to it, it's going to take much longer and you may not see the results. There is no magic bullet. We have to put in the hard work that it takes to develop these skills. All right, now that that's out of the way, what am I working on? Well, to start coming out here, I've got to warm up. I'm getting older. My bones, my muscles, my joints, they are not what they used to be. So I've got to start out with some small just pitch shots, just quarter swings, half swings. I've got a nine iron in my hand. I just start out with that. And what I'm trying to do here is just establish good contact. So that speaks to one of the things that, uh, that Marcus talks about is, is trying to get the, the low point controlled and in the right place. So with an iron, any club really for that matter that's sitting on the turf, you gotta have the low point at the golf ball or just after the golf ball on the target side of it. When Marcus demonstrates an iron, he talks about pushing, pushing with the trail arm. And when he shows it, he's even mentioned this in videos, and he's talking about an iron, he shows his palm, his trail palm, not fully released, but still sort of in that downward angle, pushing into the ground. He talks about pushing into the ground. Everybody plays sports, with their hands, fishing, hockey, tennis, golf, it's all the same. And that the body will facilitate what the hands are trying to do. So I'm really focusing and establishing in the beginning what I want to do. I'm laying down the law, push. The next thing would be, okay, well, what happens over here? Again, going back to the basics, when I started, I really wanted to get into that toe up finish position. I really wanted my follow through on the other side of the ball to be toe up and kind of going for the right, the right corner of this, this simulator screen. For me, it's the right. There you go. And I'm getting a little bit of a draw. I'm still not full swing yet. But really, I just went to a half swing or what felt like a half swing. And then from here, I'm trying to push it into the ground inside to out and, and not, not turn the toe over and not hold it open either by pulling with the lead hand. I want the toe to come up. Let's see if I can get one to go left. Then I've turned the toe over too much and I haven't gone enough inside to out. I've gone inside to in, which is not correct. And I start to really kind of learn from those mistakes. You can learn just as much from the incorrect shots as you can from the correct shots a lot of times if you know what you're looking for. Baby draw, working right back to the center. How you release is all about your timing. Bend and extend. And your body will support what your hand is trying to do. Everything, your torso, your legs, your feet, your weight shift, 
everything happens because of your intention to push. And I try and get here and release almost instantaneously, instantaneously from the top, but I get the toe up on this side. I tried to release that as soon as possible. That is right down the line. It's a baby draw. The contact felt fantastic. And I'm getting my distances up. Now I'm starting to get warm. Let's go to the hybrid. What's different about the hybrid than say the six iron or the nine iron in my bag? The ball is still sitting on the turf. It's still not on a tee, meaning that I need my low point to be at or after the golf ball. All right, now there's a good high ball flight with a tiny little draw, but started right and stayed right. So what does that tell me? If I read that ball flight, according to this approach, this, this, this way of swinging a golf club, what does that tell me? It tells me that I either held it off and I used too much lead hand, meaning I came through like this, or I didn't release it soon enough. Those two problems could be related because if I release and come toe up on this side, then I shouldn't be pulling with the left hand. That's a little better. Still not there. It's not the greatest contact in the world. That's better. Much more down the right path. It's got the baby draw. The contact was not ideal, but that is a much better result. It's much more down the intended path with the intended flight. So I have to keep working on this. I know now where my problem areas are and what I need to focus on in order to keep grinding that out and drilling it until it snaps and I go, oh, okay, now I feel it. Now let me work on ingraining that. That brings us to the driver. Now there is something very different. This is not like a six iron. This is not like anything sitting on the turf. This ball is teed up. Personally, I have a two inch tee. I've seen Marcus use four and five inch tees. Your preference is probably gonna be slightly different than that. But what is different about the driver? What am I working on? Honestly, this has been the hard one for me to get. I'm seeing in a lot of the comments that this is a hard one for you guys to get as well. Your low point has to be in a completely different place. Now, Marcus talks about his being about 18 to 24 inches behind his golf ball. If your low point is at or after the golf ball when it's on a tee and you're hitting driver, whew, man, you're going to struggle. So I'm thinking about that low point with this Releasing it as soon as possible. Releasing it as soon as possible is a huge key. All right, there you go. That is, it started right. It went left. It's not long. Contact was not great, but it's not a block. Let's try again. Now that's high. It's going to be a decent little carry distance. Went a little right, so maybe I could use a little bit more release on that one, but that was that was better struck. That's uh, 232 carry, 242 total. One of the things I really want to do with my driver is not only eliminate those blocks, and I want to have that high draw all the time. I'm working on that. The other thing I really want to work on in the coming weeks is getting more distance, meaning that I should be able to speed it up and release it faster, release it faster. That's the key to building the distance that Marcus talks about. Now there's your block. That is a very high shot. That is struck really well. That is a block. It's going to get no roll whatsoever because it didn't have the draw and it landed in a bunker. But you're looking at 243 total. The thing that's really great though, the thing that's really encouraging is that the contact is good. When I struggle with the release, a lot of times my contact 
is just awful. So I really want to get here and release and get the toe up. And then I should get the flight that I want, combine it with a good strike. It's very high, decent strike, blocked out to the right. That's the things that I struggle with, with the driver. Now, oftentimes when I'm working on the driver and I'm trying to make a correction, I'll end up with shots that don't even look remotely like a skilled golfer. It's important to say that that is going to happen as well. That happens because you're trying to, to, to rewrite the programming. So for me to come out here and top one or pop one up or just block one off the planet, it's going to happen. Don't give up. Just know that there's things you can do about it. Nothing is unsalvageable. You can fix everything. Read your ball flights. If you blocked it, or if it slices, you could have been pulling too much with the lead hand. You're not releasing enough. Maybe it's your aim. But for me in here, I know that I'm aiming correctly and I wanna try and get this to go straight. That's much better. High ball flight starts right. It's curving back to the left. <laughs> it's really not much roll because I'm sending it into the stratosphere. But I can play with that all day. The only thing I need to work on is getting that number up. And from what Marcus tells me, if I can release it faster, release it faster, that's going to give me the distance. Guys, I got a thought. Let's try something. It's going to be slightly interactive. What I want you to do is take the next three to four weeks, and I'm going to do the same. I'm not going to post videos about this for the next three to four weeks, but just know that I am going to be working every single day on developing this. When I come back after a three to four week break from this review, I want you to see my results. I'm hoping that I can show you excellent driver results, a much more consistent iron game, and a better looking swing that has even more distance built into it. I'm gonna take that time to really focus on grinding it out, and I'd like you to do it with me. I look forward to seeing you then. Again, if you haven't gone and seen Marcus's channel, go check him out. It's incredibly helpful. He's got lots of fantastic videos. Give this video a like down below, and I'll see you 